all right what is going on everyone and welcome to another special video so people have been asking me for more beginner tips and everything saying that uh, i do a lot of high end and other stuff uh, but anyway one thing i wanted to talk to you guys about was where to level up solo from like level 1 through 61 or whatever and obviously you could just if you're in a guild or experienced you could pretty much just get yourself leeched at trees and then you 1 to 61 in like two hours or less and um one thing i wanted to talk about was how you guys can do this solo maybe not two hours but like if you just are new to the game and you don't know what to do here are some spots that i would go to um especially if you're a seasonal character and you don't have like all the ap and all the extra journals so right now is a good time to be playing because they have the oasis event going on so that means you can get like one silver foods and everything um horse uh health potions i guess carrots um so yeah now is a good time because we have the oasis and that gives you an extra huge stat food bonus and i'll show you where to get it too and so once we get that i'll talk about zones that we can go grind and what i personally do during seasons which you can watch as well on most of my seasonal playlists but anyway here's how to start as a new player uh obviously you go from one through like i would say 15 or so is basically questing and you start at western guard camp due to tutorial quests and then once you get to velia which should take you maybe like five maybe ten minutes um you'll probably be like level 15 around that point right so what you're gonna want to do assuming you are a very new player uh whether you're watching this while the event is going on or not you can go buy various foods off the market like these uh oasis simple cron meals and the difference between these three foods is one is for more pbe like grinding this one i would say it's a little bit more for pvp tailored obviously you can use both of them i've definitely tested a lot of them and uh they're both good i think this one just has a slight edge on pbe um this one is used more for pvp and obviously the seafood crown meal is uh life skilling so i'd recommend at least picking up some of the traveler's maps it's like teleports back and forth and you're good to go if you don't and the season is or like the event is over you can just buy these off the market on the central market it's not that much more expensive but anyway with that said let's say we're level 15 now right we got to belia we did some of the tutorial quests and everything where do we go i personally go to castle ruins from 15 to like mid 20s i know it says like 18 to 21 but you can be there a little bit earlier um and the enemies are going to be purple and what does that mean it means uh, the game thinks you're too low of a level to be there and your stats are probably going to be lower so how do we get around that if you are playing a class with a or high accuracy you won't have any problems if you don't uh, have accuracy you can just um oh well really for the most part having like different foods available is uh very helpful and like if you don't you can just get the this one until you get to a certain level which gives accuracy but if you don't need it this is better because it gives combat xp but if you do need it this food is fine either way they're not expensive so you're mid-level 20s right now right and then you're probably wondering where to go i would personally go to bloody monastery until the mid 30s or low 30s mid 30s whenever you think it gets slow for you then you can move um after that you have a few options you're in your level 30s and <clears throat> after that it really depends on how comfortable do you feel uh grinding like higher end spots or do you are you not strong enough and by this point if you are playing on season you should probably be mid like you should have like full pen naru gear that's the one before tuvala by the way and so they just give you a lot of the stones just by playing through the season rewards leveling up easy to get uh, no investment cost so then 
If you don't think your gear is good enough, one spot you can go is Mask Owl Forest, because I said we were in the lower 30s. And then you could technically stay here up until 50 if you want, depends on how many buffs you have running. But I would recommend staying here until like 40 or like 45. Whenever you think it gets slow, then you move. So if you think you're good enough and you maybe this is your second character, you know what you're doing. I would go to, uh, where is it? Um, where's the Marnie's lab? I know where it is. I've been there. It's somewhere around here. Marnie. Marnie's lab. It's down by Keplin. Oh yeah, there it is. I was passing it. So this spot right here, I personally think it's decent XP. However, like going here up and down, like finding a rotation, there's no rotation. It's just following the road up and down again. It's kind of annoying, but the XP is good. And so once you're in your level 40s, uh, you could stay here up until like 50 if you want to. But I personally try to leave here as soon as possible because I don't really like the rotation, I guess you can call it. And so after that, um, I would say around like 47, 48, I start to head down to the Catfishman Cam. And this is where you stay up until 51. It says 49 to 51. That's very accurate. And you do level really quickly here. So it's like you're going to be here for actually like five minutes, even with like average under average gear. You can see it in my seasonals. That's how I do it all. And so, yeah, by 50... Uh, you have to do a quest. It's like, talk to the Black Spirit, and then it'll tell you, use this item, which basically allows you to enable PvP. Trust me, I know that's scary to some people who are coming into the game and just like, oh no, people can force flag PvP on me. Trust me when I say that doesn't actually happen as much as people think it does. And like, I've literally left my characters out in like, non-safe zones for a while and then literally nothing happens i've seen people afk for days in the same spot and um but yeah it just basically tells you pvp is enabled and it's not scary trust me when i say that there's a karma system in this game whether people think it's good or not uh basically the karma is like if you force flag pvp on people uh you lose karma if you don't and you just kill enemies you gain karma uh, there's actually a penalty for going red, which is negative karma in this game. And I have always said, even back in the day when I wasn't geared and I was just a beginner, I didn't really like the system either. And so even to this day, my opinion pretty much remains the same. I wish the penalties for being a red player, and when people say going red is like negative karma, right? So I wish the penalties weren't as steep. So... Here's what happens when you are red. Um, you basically, if you die, you lose XP, like your combat XP, which at a certain level, like past, like, I don't know, 63 or something, it doesn't particularly matter, but like the time to get 1% at a certain level, it it's kind of like you're wasting time. So you don't really want to do that. Plus the uh, most expensive part of it is that your uh, crystals break and your gear can downgrade if you are um you don't have crystals and you're not in the desert so yeah it's pretty expensive back in the day when crystals were like what 500k to a few million silver each it was no big deal but nowadays when people's crystals are literally into billions and if you like downgraded a pen black star i feel like you would just quit the game like i think most people would and so that's why the penalties in this game for being a red player is very harsh. I wish they would relook at it. Now, obviously, I do think that there should be a penalty because that would be just straight griefing. Like the high end players would just grief the lower end players and stuff. So I do think there should be some sort of system. I just think it should be less re like less severe as it is right now. So off to that rant, we're level 51, right? And you're probably like, okay, so when can I start doing my awakening and stuff? So that's not like level 56. So what I like to do is personally, I like to go to Soldier's Grave, which is uh, over here. Or I like to go to Polly's Forest, which is uh, right. Where's Polly's Forest? Yeah, down here. 
So it says you have to be level 55 to be here. No, you don't. You just need like 160 AP. And that is roughly when you are mid to Vala gear, like so try or higher. It's very obtainable for a new player. Um, but if you don't think you're ready for that and you just want to be near a town, Soldier's Grave is over here and it's like slightly lower from 52. You could stay here till 56 if you want to. And it's a very good source of skill point and XP, but like realistically nowadays, if you're playing it on season, they just kind of give you the rewards to the point where you don't need it as much. It's just nice to have extra. And so I would stay here from 52 to 56 if you want to. And then that's a safe bet. But otherwise, you can go to polys at like lower 50s and be fine, to be honest. So this place, polys, is very good for... Uh, skill point XP, and I've stayed here till 61 before on seasons, and I have videos of it. I personally think the rotation here is a lot easier because there's a lot more density. So um, if you're playing on seasons, you get those like uh, stones to upgrade your Tuvala gear and everything. So I think this is a good spot as well up until 61 if you want to. However. Uh, at level 56, you should probably do your Awakening and Succession quest lines. And it doesn't matter what class you are. If you don't know what six, the difference between Succession and Awakening is. So basically, from 1 to 56, you, these are your main hand weapons, right? Um, you use these as a start. So when you do Awakening, it uh, is a second set of abilities right so it's kind of like other games when you level up your job and proficiency you get more skills right so you get a whole second set of skill lines and there's more stuff you can do however if you just like the skills you have as your primary from 1 to 56 you can go succession which means you don't get the awakening line you don't get the extra skills however your main skills are buffed so I personally play Succession, Dark Knight. I also really enjoy Awakening. So Dark Knight is one of those classes that is very special because both options are pretty good. Whereas some other classes, one is significantly better than the other. Uh, I wish they would balance it more, but um, Dark Knights are very lucky that both of them are pretty solid. So uh, let's say you are level 56, right? Now you have multiple options. Um, questing to 61 is a fast option, but obviously I understand not everyone just likes questing and you'd rather just grind. So let me just briefly talk about how you can go about questing. So down in the Dregan area, I believe, um, there's a Chenga's Shuriken Tome, right? So you get one of these by default. I believe it should look like, uh... This thing, like the Adventures Tome, you get that at the very beginning. Everyone has that, right? And so you can upgrade that Tome to the Shuriken one. And what this allows you to do is gain combat XP from doing questing. And so when you have this on, some quests like give you actual huge chunks of XP. So you see people going from like 58 to 61 by questing in like an hour and a half. Uh, I have a video of that. You can watch that too. I've done it on seasons just to do it. But if you are the person that likes grinding, um, from 61, you can stay here if you want, or you could just try out different spots. But I think after 60, you should have enough gear, even full pen or tat Tuvala is, you know, relatively good here. I think it would more be more on the pen side, but at tat Tuvala, you could be grinding these spots as well. Um, and so, like, if you are within the 200 AP zone, you could definitely grind a lot at these spots. Centaurs is probably one of the best, uh, beginner, uh, spots for money because it just gives a lot of money. It's comparable to Endgame, more or less, for a very low AP requirement. So, this place is kind of contested. However, with that said, you get a lot of money comparing yourself to, like, pretty high-end spots, actually. So... Yeah, once you are 61, basically you have, for the most part, everything in your kit unlocked and you need about like 1200 skill points or something to basically get everything you want, including awakening. And so by that point, after that is all just gear upgrades and you pick whatever you want, go wherever you want to grind. 
Uh, within reason, but let's say you're around like 240, 250 AP, right? And you're wondering, okay, so where do I go to push from 61 and up? So after 61, the only thing that really matters is people get an extra ability here. Every class has this. It's your passive and you'll get a different thing. So that's the only thing you get at 62. And you obviously when you level up, you get some more stats like HP, MP, all that kind of stuff, but it's not really a big deal. So from 61 to 62, I personally grinded um, a little bit of everywhere, but I think the best place, if you want to just level really fast, probably in the uh, Miramok Ruins area. And it says level 59. Honestly, people stay there to like 64. You can basically stay there until you quit BDO. <laughs> so yeah, this is a good spot. Uh, there are definitely group spots here and definitely solo spots. Um, so this place, you can stay here up until whenever. And then after that, it really depends on where your gear is. So what you would do after this is just look at all of these things. This is the monster zone. You could find it in your um, like settings thingy and then just find it. So after that, you basically look at all your gear and then you just look at every region and then the zones and then so you find spots that w reflect your AP and DP. I have a separate video basically covering every region. I took a look at every spot and for the most part, I would say about 90, 95 percent of these are accurate to the point where I would agree with the uh, recommended uh, stat line they offer you. So after that, basically just pick the spots that you think are good and find items that you think you need. Um, for me personally, from 62 and up, I basically just grinded at Elvia Orcs. I was roughly within the 270 uh, AP at that point, which is over here. And Elvia is a step up from like your normal grind spots. Everything is kind of like empowered. Just do more. You give more uh, grind spots, but with better loot, higher requirements. So yeah, or camp is probably a few percent an hour, one to two percent, depending on how buffed you are. And here's some, before we wrap up, here are some tips I can give you guys. If you are just looking to level up fast, here are some crystals I would set up. So personally, I have this set up, right? And you have uh, PVE XP as your artifacts, and it gives you an extra 100% times, uh, like 25 times four, plus you get the bonuses from having it equipped. So what it should look like is uh, artifacts so is like a total of 300 plus 100, right? So that's a lot of extra XP. These are very cheap to get. If you want to level up fast, um, just get AP against monsters to help you grind faster and combat XP and uh, you'll be good to go. After that, start grinding with the Kron meals and they'll just give you an extra 20%. Um, other things to get are your tent buffs if you can. And then they give you a lot of these XP scrolls just by playing through the seasons. And yeah, they just level up really quickly. Extra things you can do are combat XP from drafts. Uh, the, what people call church buffs in this game is when you go, every town has it, you just kind of have to find it. So let me show you where it is in Velia at least. So here in Velia, this is like the church, right? And this NPC will sell things like attack, defense, or protection, and experience if you want to level up. And you can get all of the buffs, by the way. It's just how much silver do you want to spend. Um, after that, other bonuses are Black Spirit, and then you can do your exchange for uh, like combat and skill XP. This is actually an event one right now, which is pretty nice. And yeah. Use whatever you think you can. Extra XP to level up. There's usually an event going on for like loot and everything. So yeah, good luck leveling up. I know this is a 20 minute video, but if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Join the Discord. We actually have some stuff in the Discord, like guides that I've made. So you can just watch it without having to ask me questions. Or you could just ask me, leave it in the comments. I'll get back to you. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, Drop a like on the video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you guys come back. 
and hopefully these videos help you out so see you guys tomorrow have a fantastic day